At the base of the Templo Mayor, we find the stone of Coyol Shalki. Now, the Temple of Huitzilopochtli, one of the two temples at the top of Templo Mayor, commemorates the god's victory over his sister, Coyol Shalki, and 400 brothers who plotted to kill their mother, Kodulikwe, or Serpent Skirt. Now, this piece is meant to signify the birth of the sun at dawn. What has happened here is Huitzilopochtli has chased away his brothers and dismembered his sister, Koyol Shauki, creating this very gruesome image. Now, obviously, he isn't creating this image, but this is the Aztec understanding. And to walk you around the image just a little bit, you'll notice that the goddess is dismembered. So here we see the tip of the femur dismembered from the hip. Again, the same with both shoulders. Uh, here and here. What looks like beautiful ruffles, that's actually, well, human fat. And the body has been dismembered. The ropes and snakes also are symbolic of dismemberment, of being torn apart. The head has also been dismembered from the body. The skull plays into her role in this entire cosmos where they understand that death is necessary for further life. And so we see these death symbols quite commonly. But it's not death in the Western tradition. This is not an end, but rather an element of a cycle. It's sort of the cycle of life, just a very dark form of it. Now, this piece is obviously artificially colored, but gives you a better sense of some of the contrast that's going on here. Sacrificial victims would have been hurled down the temple stairs, and they would have broken up and landed on the image, adding their blood in almost a reproduction of what they believe happened according to their mythology. This is really creating a proclamation of power for the Mexica, showing their power and almost their control over not only the people around them, but arguably more than that, arguably their control of the environment, their control of the cosmos. Now, the piece is carved in low relief with smooth, even surfaces. So from the side, it looks like this. Now, this is very different from what we're used to when it comes to relief sculpture. You'll notice when you look at it that when we come to the edge of these flat, planar surfaces, so for example here I'm looking at the hip, you'll notice that this is very flat and the edge is very flat. There's no attempt at three-dimensionality here. It's very different from the European model and here's a European model from roughly the same time period and here we're looking at uh, an example from Ghiberte's Gates of Paradise and you'll notice when the Europeans do relief sculpture, they're trying to create something that gives the illusion of being three-dimensional, truly three-dimensional, as if it has real mass or that you could reach in and grab some of these figures and pull them out. Whereas when we look at the Aztec example, you'll notice big flat planes that seem to lack that three-dimensional modeling. This is a difference in aesthetic more than anything else. This is the Aztec looking at their world and understanding it in these flat planes. And in fact, they're getting this, these ideas that they're using in relief sculpture, in part from some of the illustrations that we see, the codices and the traditions that we see from Mesoamerica, such as the carving of hieroglyphic figures or relief carving for just about any of these groups. So what you see is sort of the sculptural equivalent of line and flat tone, but made three-dimensional simply by removing the material that is not part of the narrative that you're trying to get across. So it is three-dimensional relief sculpture just with a very different aesthetic than what we're used to in the West.